today I'll be discussing my Carnot maps simplifier program. And essentially it allows you to simplify Boolean expressions by taking advantage of gray codes. So what a gray code is, it's basically a reflectant binary string. So in a sense, you have a binary expression like this, and you take advantage of the fact that from one row to the next, the difference between each cell is only one bit. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. This bit changes. Here this bit changes, but this bit remains. So if you notice, it doesn't actually go in order. It's not 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, 1, 0, 1, 1. It's 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And this is a very nice property because that means that if you have a true for this value and this value, and this value changes, does it really matter what this bit is if it changes? So we're going to explore that right now in this example with the true table with two variables. So we have a bit here and a bit here. So the initial given expression is a not b plus a not b. And that means for 0, 0, a not plus uh, times b not. So false, else we say it's true. So this means that both of these are not. Plus a not, since this is 0 b since this is 1. And we can somehow simplify it to a0. How do we do that? It's pretty easy. We notice that here the 0 and the 1 change. And this means that, you know what, we don't need a b because regardless of what the b is, regardless of what the b is, the a value remains the same. So all we need to store is the fact that the a stays the same and the b value changes. We can figure out that the simplified expression is a0. So to give another example, we have this here. Now we have 3. And we figure out that in here we can make a group. We can make a group where the A remains the same and the B changes. And here we can make a group where the B is the same and the A changes. Here we have three variables like this. A not B not plus A not B plus A B not. And we can simplify this to B not plus A not in this way. So it's pretty cool. And it's the exact same principle. And if we do this, we see that it's true for all of them. So we make one large group. A not B not plus A not B plus A B not plus A B. It's just simply true because for all cases it's always going to be true. Let's take the case of three variables. So it's the exact same. You basically have a pattern matching algorithm that basically generates and finds the largest pairs, and you can have overlapping. And the goal of this is to get the largest pair possible for every single cell. Now, one thing that's not implemented in this program yet is wrapping around, which is implemented code wise, but not GUI wise. But if you have something, and let's say, for example, here, in this case, for the 1, 0, in this case, you could actually have this number to wrap around all the way here. Because we have 1, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0. We could in fact wrap this around all the way here, since only this bit is changing. So we could actually in fact further simplify this to just B naught C naught instead of having the bit. So here we have this scenario over here, and we can add more. And the program updates everything in real time. Similarly, we have this over here. And you can add different pieces to it, and it slowly creates the expression and and this program basically mimics a pattern matching algorithm, in which case you would go through each cell, figure out the best possibility for that cell, and merge it with the other sets. And it does this through a really cool way of using calculus. Now, a little bit of a small math lesson. If you guys recall uh, the way derivatives work in integration, integration lets you find the slope underneath the line really quickly. So um, let me just switch out of this. If I have a sketchbook express, I'm going to to show you guys the way that this uses calculus to determine. So let's see over here. So if we have a generic graph, let's see. So here we have f of x. 
I want to find the area here, here, so two, four. We can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to say, hey, find the integral from two to four. Okay, Well, this is pretty much just f hat 4 minus f hat 2, where this is the antiderivative. So we can do that with an array. Basically, we're porting this idea over. Of finding the area underneath the graph such that we can get, I know, Now, uh, you're probably thinking this has nothing to do with the card on that, but it actually does have something to do with it. If we have a grid over here, we have a grid, like a grid, we basically can use this property to quickly find out what the largest squares are. So, we basically set a 1 in a 2D like our matrix, we go through each one, and we try out the different possibilities. We know that if there is a square, there's one thing unique about it. We know that the area from here here, the sum of them should be equal to the size. So if I have a 1 and a 1 here, it should be equal to a 2. That's how we can quickly figure out if inside here there's a whole rectangle. So in the case of this, if we go here, we would see that the area from here to here is 3 and not 4, so therefore we cannot make this square. We basically extend this to the sense of 3D. Using the principle of inclusion and exclusion, we can find out the area so if we're given a grid, let's say, we're given a grid here, and I want to find the area from here, here, I would take the area here, subtract it with this, subtract it with this, and add it back, and I'll get the area here, 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 here. And this is called 2D perfect sum. Called inclusion exclusion. And using that, we can quickly calculate um, the squares. And using this, we can find out all that. And then you just insert everything into a priority queue. And you always use the heuristic of an greedy approach of pairing these up so that you form squares. Forming squares is really good and makes a lot of fun. A lot of good masking reviews to generate the truth tables. These over here, given expressions, simplified expressions, calculating to see the difference in bit changes between everything. Overall, there was a lot of computation required to do all these graphics. Custom UI components, real-time rendering, uh, the rendering engine for the graphs, so with the different pairings. Overall, it's a really complicated system, but it's a really powerful technique of simplifying Boolean expressions. And we can see here we have the gigantic Boolean expression and the simplified way this kind of work. So it's definitely very efficient, and I'm currently working on getting it to work to up to 15 variables using a tabular method. So inside this tabular method, you can insert it your own, and you won't have a nice grid to show you the things. I'm going to do this computationally, and it will output the solution. So this is pretty much the progress on my going on to a simplifier. I will continue working on it over the years. Let's see what happens of this. It's definitely a big project. I'm really hoping this can go far. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, like it, comment, find it cool, and thanks for watching. And if you want to watch the big progress, you know you can follow my GitHub account. His name is Matt Bunny, and you'll find this project at the top. Thanks for watching.